by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Honey, when you least expect for God to show up and have anything to do with your little nasty self, he will show up right in the middle of your nasty and speak to you and let you know I ain't going nowhere. And then turn around and deliver you from your nasty. Yeah. Oh my God, who wouldn't have served a God like that? Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips, no matter where you are. Subscribe today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. This is your world. So let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. We are. If you have your Bibles uh, with you today, if you'll go with me to the book of uh, Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11 and uh, verse 28 through 30, we're going to continue this series on how to experience the presence of God. And the major focus today is in the area of, of, of in intimacy, how to experience the presence of God, and we're going to really focus on intimacy with God and what, what does that mean. Now, the real purpose of salvation is not just so we can miss hell or not go to hell, <laughs> although that probably was at one time a motivation for a lot of people, but the real purpose of salvation is an intimate relationship with God. Please, please understand me. It, it's not, I'm going to get saved so I don't go to hell. Um, but Jesus died so that you can get saved, and instead of just knowing about God, you get to know him. You get to know him intimately. And that's when you move out of religion and just the mechanics of Christianity into a real personal relationship with him, and then, and then this Bible works, and then these promises come to pass. Other than that, you know, you're just learning all of the things you do as a Christian, but never knowing who he is, knowing about God, but never knowing God. Now, this, this really touched my heart when I, when I looked at this, this intimacy. I, I, if you'll take a man and a woman in a marriage, you understand that in order to get to that place of intimacy, and I'm talking about real intimacy, not just sex, but real intimacy, it's going to require being vulnerable. And vulnerability can be a scary thing because when you become vulnerable with somebody, they could hurt you, they could betray you, they could do all kinds of things with that. And yet, there is an opportunity for us to have an intimate relationship with God. So over the last month, you've heard me talk about an intimate relationship with God, but I, I want to take some time and give you some practical things uh, uh, concerning what this means. And so, again, Jesus Christ, the real purpose for our salvation, the real reason why he died was not just to deliver us from hell, but he died so we can each have an intimate relationship with God. Christianity is not so much about all the rules you have to keep. It is more about taking advantage 
to have an intimate, real, one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. It's not just about wearing a Christian T-shirt that says, I'm a Christian because you, you know, you, you keep all the rules and you try to convince people that you never mess up. Uh, but Christianity is about a personal relationship, an intimate relationship with God. Let me begin this morning by defining the word intimacy so we'll be on the same page. Intimacy is a close familiarity or friendship. A close familiarity or friendship. How familiar are you with the God you say you serve? Would you say you have a friendship with God or, you know, is it do you know about God? Or do you, do you actually have a, a close familiarity, a close uh, friendship with God? Is there a closeness there between you and God? You see, as, as human beings, we long for acceptance. We long for not just acceptance, but we long for unconditional acceptance. That means no matter what you do, you're accepted by God. And, uh, you know, religion has, has taught us that if you do this, 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 God doesn't accept you. Let, let me tell you something. If there's anybody who has unconditional acceptance for you, it's God. Amen? Amen. So we long for unconditional acceptance and we long for, for closeness, unconditional closeness with God. God wants that. God wants to be close uh, with you. But there's no desire on your part as a human to really be close with God because somebody told you that's not possible, that only Jesus can be close to God. There can be a closeness with God where God can speak to you and, and, and you can literally be talking to him and asking for certain things or talking about certain things and, 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 and to see it done on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, when that first started happening to me, it was, it was kind of, wow, God responded. Now it's, it's, no, it's no big deal because that's just where we are right now. There is an intimacy. There's a closeness. There's unconditional acceptance. You know, we, we, want to be, we want to be cared for. That's a big thing. People want to be cared for. People want somebody to care about them, to care for them. That's one of the biggest hungers in the world right now. I don't feel like I'm cared for. People want to be cared for. They want to be known. They want to be understood and loved for who they are regardless of what they go through. Remember last week I told you Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, then why are so many Christians condemning other people? We've got to get to a point where we can care for people no matter what. And, and, and that's something that, that was made possible. Now, when you look at this area of intimacy, there's really four types of intimacies, and I want to break them down so you can see what we're talking about here today. There is mental intimacy. There is emotional intimacy. There is spiritual intimacy. And then there is physical intimacy. Mental intimacy, emotional intimacy, spiritual intimacy, and physical intimacy. And out of these four, only one includes touching. <laughs> And that's physical intimacy. And it seems like that's what most people are familiar with. When you say, we use the word intimacy, they're familiar with sex. They're familiar with, with touching. But there's, a, there's a, a mental intimacy. There is a spiritual intimacy between you and the Father. There's an emotional intimacy. That word intimacy literally means you can come into me and see. And what have you shown some? Who has been able to see your, your mental part? Who has been able to see into your emotions? Who have allowed you to, 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 to be a part of that relationship between, between you and God? We're only with, with the area of physical intimacy. And I tell you, you can have sex with somebody and still not have ever achieved real intimacy. It's not just touching. And so, John 16, well, let me read this, uh, Matthew chapter 11, 28. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And he says, I will give you rest if you come to me. I will give you rest. Verse 29, take my yoke upon you 
and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest in your souls. 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When I look at developing an intimate relationship with God, of course, it starts with his word. It starts with his word. I need to, I need to know something about him. I need to know something about him. And the word tells me about him. It gives me knowledge about him. And guess what happens? The more I learn about him, I enter into number two, a fellowship with him. So I take what I learn about him, and then I can fellowship with him. And like any other relationship, once you start fellowshipping with him, there, there, there's a level of intimacy that's working there because you know about him and you're spending time with him. You're talking with him. He's talking to you. You're praying. You're getting in that word. You see, you, you, don't, you don't open the Bible up and read it as a rule. Amen. Well, I'm a Christian. I, I guess I got to read my Bible. The Bible is it, the opportunity. It, it's, it's like the opportunity for me to learn about him, and then as I'm learning about him, I start fellowshipping with him. Glory be to God. But it starts with the Word, right? It starts with the Word. And I don't, I don't know any other way to explain to Christians, you're, you're never going to be able to have an intimate relationship with God excusing the Word, not spending time learning about him. See, if you don't learn about him, then, then some devilish person can come and mislead you about who he is, and, and whatever you think God is, that's what you're going to start expecting from him. If you think God is, if you think God is a um, judge and that he's going to judge you for everything you do wrong, that's what you expect from him. When you think God is someone that's not going to meet your needs, then when you have needs, then that's what you come to expect from him because somebody told you that. Somebody told you that. And so we got to get in the Word so we can know some things about him, and then we enter into fellowship with him, and then we begin to develop an impression. This is my impression of God, that I know that my God is love, and I, don't know, my, my, and I know my God is, is peace, and I know my God will, uh, will do anything for me. He, he wants to be with me. He wants, a rela he wants a relationship with me. And then after that impression, then I begin to experience him. I, th this is what I'm talking about with God. We've limited our Christianity to just come to church, read the Bible, and keep the rules. That's not it. That's not it. It's not coming to church, reading your Bible, keep the rules. It's about do you know him? Do you know him when you're up? Do you know him when you're down? Do you know him when you're good? Do you know him when you're bad? See, if you develop an impression about God, and you think, well, God is only going to be good to me when I'm good. you got the wrong impression of God. God's not good to you because you're good. God is good to you because he's good. He's not responding to what you do. He's responding based on who he is. Hallelujah. And still we have churches that are just, you got to keep this rule. God going to get you. You're going to go to hell. You got, you got married three times, something wrong with you, you did that wrong, you messed up here, and they're just keeping score. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but you got preachers in churches that are condemning the world. Jesus says, I didn't come to condemn the world, I came to rescue you. I came to save you and deliver you out of the stuff that you're dealing with. I didn't come to beat you up and beat you down and condemn you to hell and tell you you ain't nothing. I want relationship with you. I want you no matter what. And when you miss it, I'm there to counsel you. I'm there to talk to you. I'm there to pick you up. I am there to pull you out of a ditch. I am there to, 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 to do whatever it needs because I love you. I can't help but to love you. I'm a jealous God because I'll fight for you when somebody else has more of your attention than I do. I love you. I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to stop fighting for you. Oh, my God. We got to step out of this religion. Look at what Jesus, uh, look at that uh, same verse of Scripture in the um, New Living Translation, please. No, look at it in the message. Let's go to the message translation. That, that uh, what we just read, 28. Look at this. 
If you could put it on the screen so everybody can see what I'm seeing. Are you tired? <laughs> Some of y'all like, mm. <laughs> Worn out, burned out on religion. I wrote a book, Why I Hate Religion. Burned out on religion. He said, here's what I want you to do. Come to me. Get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you will learn to live freely and lightly. That is an invitation to an intimate relationship with God. And not in any of those places did you hear him say, keep all the rules, do all of this, be a goody-goody thing. See, he's, he's going to take care of that through the relationship. The relationship will give birth to all of that. You're going to want to do right when you're in relationship with somebody so full of love, when you're in relationship with, 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 with the righteousness that, that came from God in the first place. But we don't get it. We still want to play church. We still want to play church and be churchy and brag about how, how, how much we know about God, but you don't know him. You don't know him. And then when you mess up, you're so full of shame and you're so full of guilt and you're so full of condemnation. And God is standing there screaming, hey, man, I still love you and I still want you and I can still use you. But the preacher is saying, God can't use you. God don't like ugly. And he condemns you. And he makes you, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Look at what you did. That is not God. He don't know God. He don't even know about God. And you keep going to that church because that's your mama's church, excuse me. But you better find the right church that you're going to have the wrong impression of God. God is not a punisher. God is not punishing you every time you miss the mark. He knows what happens even as humans we know, that when your little baby learns how to walk and it's, he's one and a half, two years old, whatever, and he's trying to learn how to walk, you don't beat the baby down every time he falls. Fall one more time. Fall one more time. And Cedar, Cedar, Cedar and I burn you with the, uh, uh, I, 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 fall one more time. I throw you in that fire. Pray, fall, fall one more time. You don't even do that. And yet you're, 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 you're believing that God would do something like that? Honey, when you least expect for God to show up and have anything to do with your little nasty self, he will show up right in the middle of your nasty and speak to you and let you know I ain't going nowhere. And then turn around and deliver you from your nasty. Oh, my God, who wouldn't have served a God like that? Go to Bashada. Yeah, I ain't going to cry. I ain't going to cry. Who you? Glory be. Who? Yeah. Yes, sir. You're going to run into people all the time. Yeah, but the Bible say this and the Bible say that. Well, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in that because the Bible say this. All right, bro, you telling me about the Bible. All right. Yeah, we know how much you know the Bible. Hey, we, we know you know scriptures. You, you know the Greek, praise the Lord. You done went to cemetery school and you got your little degree. You've been ordained by five of the greatest pastors in the entire country. Yeah, you know all of that. But do you know him? Do you know him? They that know their God shall do exploits. Do you know him when you're in the ditch? Do you know him when you're broke? Do you know him when you're going through a divorce? Do you know him when you had an abortion? Do you know him? Can he lift you up? Are you? I don't agree with Pastor Dollar. I don't care. I know Jesus. <laughs> and that's the problem. 
we, we, we're, we're looking for validation from all the wrong people and all the wrong places. God has already validated you, qualified you. Certainly you don't think you can show up before God already qualified. God doesn't call anybody to do anything from him that's already qualified. Really? You thought you was that good, and because you were so good, God chose you. <laughs> oh, you, 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 you wonderful self. You're so good, you know, you are, you are, you are a superstar in the body of Christ. <laughs> It's just so awesome that this is why the Lord chose you, because you pray and fast every other week. Glory to God. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's why God called you, because you yeah, yeah, good. Now, that ain't God didn't call you because of that. God used a David, a murderer, an adulterer, a peeping tongue. God used Moses, selfish, murderer. God used the apostle Paul, religious, trying to keep all the law and trying to condemn and punish everybody that broke the law. That's why Paul did that. Paul did that because, you know, he was religious zealous. He was zealous about his religion and about the law, and he intended on carrying that law out. And when he found anybody that was breaking that law, he executed that, like somebody made him God. And he had an experience. <laughs> oh, my God, as much as he knew about God, one day he met Jesus. One day he met him. So he went from his knowledge from the Old Testament to saying an experience when he experienced this man that said, Paul, Paul, Saul, Saul, why persecuted me? And, 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 and that relationship began to develop. Hallelujah. And God, 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 he couldn't see. Paul couldn't see no more. And then God called a man that Paul had been persecuting and spoke to him because he had a relationship with him. Oh, you hear me now? Listen to me. Listen to me. Because he had a relationship with Jesus, he said, go and find Paul and lay hands on him, and his sight will be restored. Now, you know folks that's killing folks and doing stuff you're like, no, I ain't, I ain't trying to do that. I ain't going to forget what he did to my cousin down the street. Bobo Nim won't mess with nobody. He came out there and messed with Bobo Nim. I can't do that. You know you got to know him. Yeah to be able to overcome the hurt and even the fear, the fear that if you showed up that Paul might kill you, you got to know God. You see, see you, you can't pull out no little scripture because, because you, God might say something that you don't have an understanding of the scripture. Eventually, you'll find out it's in the book, but God might lead you to do something that at the time you, don't, you, you, you didn't think he would lead you to do such as forgiving somebody that robbed you, stole from you, and killed somebody in your family. And God will use you to go and to deliver them. Are you ready for this relationship with God? Once you know him, nothing else matters. Why are you dogging me out? I'm eating a raw apple pie that I like. <laughs> I don't care. Now I can be free to help other people to be delivered because I have been delivered from the clutter and the slander of other folks. Are you confused because you know God but don't feel a personal connection to him? Creflo Dollar explains how to fellowship with God to take your relationship with him to new levels in his series, How to Develop Intimacy with God. I need to know something about him, and the word tells me about him. The more I learn about him, I enter into number two, a fellowship with him. And you're spending time with him, you're talking with him, he's talking to you, you're praying, and then we begin to develop an impression 
And then after that impression, then I begin to experience Him. All of the knowledge about God should finally lead you to a relationship with God. You can get both messages today for a love gift of just 15 U.S. dollars or more, plus shipping and handling. Simply visit CreflodollarMinistries.org and click eStore, or call the number on your screen to deepen your relationship with God today. You can interact with Creflo Dollar Ministries anytime, anywhere. Engage with Christ on a deeper level, develop your walk with the Lord, and strengthen your faith. All of this is at your fingertips with our state-of-the-art, custom-designed app. The new Creflo Dollar Ministries app gives you unlimited access to numerous features. With the broadcast feature, you can access your favorite messages, sermon series, and more. The app puts you right in the sanctuary with live streaming of services, you can receive practical advice for applying the Word of God to your life every day with our daily devotionals. Add events to your calendar, set reminders, get directions, share with friends, and even give securely through this platform. To get connected via the new Creflo Dollar Ministries app, visit creflodollarministries.org slash app or text app to 51555 today. Creflo Dollar Global Missions has fed, clothed, housed, and shared the gospel of grace with people on practically every continent. I want to take a moment to encourage you to visit our website and catch up on all the missions work we're doing around the world. You may never visit these places or witness the poverty and levels of human suffering firsthand, but your support, prayers, and selfless giving equipped us to go and to change lives for the better. Thank you for caring enough to proactively take steps to stop misfortune in the lives of others. And thank you. If you want to support our global missions outreach endeavors, consider becoming a partner today by calling in or by visiting us online and signing up. Thank you for partnering with us today. Text to Give with Secure Give is a fast, easy way to give from anywhere, anytime. It's just two quick steps. First, text the keyword CDMBC followed by the amount you like to give to 74483. Second, when asked to confirm, just text Y and your transaction is complete. That's all there is to it. Text to Give, the fastest, easiest way to give on the go. Join us online as we bring you praise and worship from the World Changers Church family and the Word of God from Pastors Creflo Dollar and Taffy Dollar. For more information, visit us at creflodollarministries.org. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.